Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and I've got a new one for you here that may not be that miniature, but it's definitely going to be obscure, at least for most of the general populace. So this is Arya, full action plastic model kit, the Hunter's Poem from Suyata. Suyata is an interesting company. They've done kind of whatever they feel like, from little SD, whimsical, Miyazaki-looking sets of the Titanic to powered armor mecha walnuts and various assorted nuts from trees to sci-fi racing cars and if you remember this little kind of ukiyo-e style uh, samurai model they've got like low poly looking ps1 generation era German soldiers that look like they're old Tamiya cover paintings. And then there's this. I mean, they really are doing just whatever they please. So obviously jumping in on the whole Mecha Musume, you know, girly model kit bandwagon, but kind of with their own take. So I can't read Chinese. And unfortunately, I'm not sure what a lot of the background is on this young lady. But so you can see we've got the main model kit of Arya herself. A big Wolverine style motorcycle and then her little best dog friend right there. So a couple of different helmets for her. Uh, got a bunch of different gear that she has. Kind of this weird like scissor blade shield. Cool looking sword that I think actually has a bunch of other options. Blades move. Various faces for the dog drone with missile launchers. Uh, the shield can go on the front of the bike. And then there's like two different options on how we can actually have her put together. That's kind of cool. Various facial features and a whole ton of decals. So I haven't even had a chance to pop open this kit. I'm hoping she's a little less flimsy than my Suyata Samurai dude. So you can see here we have three finished faces. And then three unfinished if you really want to be a glutton for punishment and paint your own. Anime eyeballs. I don't. Hair. Actually, I'm curious size-wise. I've got a 30-minute sister here from Bandai. Just kind of curious how we will compare in size. Obviously, when this is all said and done, we'll take a look at that like the hilt of the blade there. I'm going to spare you the opening of all these various baggies. Lots of thin little joint bits. Flesh tones. That is some tiny little parts there. Just a heads up. Shotgun sprue. Tires for the bike. Good size. Pistols. The main body of the bike, pretty good size. Tail on it, I guess. You can see we've seen quite a few different colors so far. That's always a nice thing. Little control dials and whatnot. Looks like more body. I can see some breasts and the shield on this set. More bike parts. Lots of yellow stuff. Looks like a repeat of a different sprue. Base included. That's always a plus. This looks like a basic frame for the female body. And I do know that Suyata has already shown off another upcoming girl model robot kit. So, something to keep an eye out for if this is something that interests you. A uh, baggie of hands, which seems to be the standard operating procedure with a lot of these companies. At least these smaller scale companies. And that looks like another similar sprue. Ah, uh, you know why it looks like a similar sprue? Remember on the box, it said that there were various color options on how we can do the body. And that looks like part of the sword blade slash hilt. And there's even some clear orange bits in there. Alright, what else we got? Surprisingly, not a whole lot of polycaps. I don't know how I feel about that yet. 
And when I say not a whole lot of polycaps, there are some in that kind of harder plastic that we have seen more of in recent years. Being somebody who grew up actually building the original 79 Gundam model kits in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, I remember how floppy kits, and I, I built my share of like Ari, MI, Aoshima, uh, Gunze Sanyo, I mean, I think they even did some kits. Somebody did those door back. Maybe that was Aoshima. Anyway. anyway, I built a lot of kits in the days before Polycaps and in the days since. And I always get worried when I don't see them. But, you know, maybe those worries are unfounded. Hopefully, fingers crossed. We'll find out, won't we? All right. Correction on the handlebars of the bike. That's okay. Hold on to that. Some actual honest-to-goodness rubber polycaps. Okay. Feelings soothed. The decals. are these, these are like decal decals. These are not sticker stickers. Okay. Something to be aware of, if you don't mind that. What's it say in Japanese? I gotta ask somebody to translate. Okay, well, I'm like I, obviously we, we know who they're trying to cater to with shots like that, but I'll, I'll let that one slide. I, I dig the colors and the fact that she's a bit more properly dressed than some of the other kits out there, I like. Um, I'm not sure which color. The black one does look pretty cool, but the purple and white is a nice color scheme as well. Good to see that it is in both English, Japanese, and Chinese. So if you read any of those three languages, that should help. Okay, we have a breakdown of which sprues to use in order to decide on the color schemes. I'm kind of leaning towards the white with the yellow because this is gray without it. I don't know. I might get some family input on that. Instructions for decals if you've never done it. That's kind of a nice little touch. I mean, obviously, for somebody of my, I don't want to say experience because it's not like I'm that good at building models, but the fact that they kind of break it down for you, what you need to do on the sprue. If you aren't familiar with model building, that's kind of a nice touch. All of the various layouts. We've got a couple little warnings here about these sprues of what you need and what you don't. Uh, not the most exciting and in depth. I do like the fact when we have a breakdown of what actual parts we're going to need when we build the, each section. That's kind of a nice touch. I think that sword she's got. Reminds me of like one of the switch axes or something from Monster Hunter. I wish the bike did something. That was like one of my, my big irritations just upon seeing the completed kit is it didn't really do anything. And with those big claws on it made me think it should totally like transform or be like extra armor or most payata style ride armor. I dig the stupid goofy dog thing too. So here is actually a image of the next model. I know they've actually had preview pictures of her already out there on the net so as I've always said I like to use show Z they kind of update their stuff really quickly so if you want to see pictures of what this model looks like she'll be there so yeah there we go um uh, Weibo and WeChat Facebook I might have to check that out anyway uh, wish me luck we'll try putting Aria here all together and we'll see how she turns out all right, I got Aya here all put together. And, well, I'm really of two minds. So first thing, color-wise, I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. You'll notice she's on that stand, and there's a very good reason for that. She has no real sense of balance. And much like when I was talking about the Tsuyota Samurai here, uh, the joints just don't work as well as they need to. Now, you can see, I mean, she can hold her pose okay, and the problem is, once things start moving, everything starts moving. And obviously, much like the other kits like this, you can change the pose, uh, you'll see her hands. So if you want to actually have anything with some weight to it in her arms, that tends to be an issue. Um, grabbing, or you have that happen. <laughs> 
grabbing her sword here. Let's see if I can actually get her to hold it for once. That's the thing. Uh, every time I have anything in the arms, it just wants to flop out, unfortunately. All right, you know what? Let me replace the hands, and they just don't want to even stay on. Jeez. So, the weight and the tightness of the joints, you can see that the arm with the sword just keeps drooping down there. Uh, that, that seems to be an issue. Uh, if I put the shield on her arm right here, it's going to get her whole sense of equilibrium all messed up there. Now this doesn't even want to cooperate with me on camera. Cool. So that's a major issue, uh, the fact that it just doesn't want to cooperate, which is a shame because I like the look, I like the design, I like the fact that due to the color variations you have there with the figure, with all the optional colors, uh, you don't have to have it as revealing, or you could make it as revealing as you'd like to be. And then there's the issue of, like, the bike. I, I think the bike is a really nice looking piece of equipment. And you can see here, so I haven't put any decals or anything like that on there. Uh, it looks cool. Uh, there's a lot going on with it. Um, actually, the bike is probably the most stable piece. And we've got her dog here. And again, much like the other parts, everything, there's all kinds of color options. But what sucks and was a little disappointing was the fact that there's actually not enough color options to make an entire second figure. That would have been really cool. Um, I know I mentioned it before, like with the Eastern model ATK girl kits, you had enough pieces to actually have two figures with everything that was included. I thought that was a really nice touch. You know, they're not the most stable with the tiny little feet there. She's on the stand right now as well. But for as fiddly as this thing is, it can keep the pose, it can actually hold everything. Uh, she's having a real tough time with those weapons, and the amount of undercut parts on there was just really frustrating. It took me a long time to get things done. I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, by the time I think I mentioned, I might have even mentioned in the beginning of the video that there were the new figures coming out. I already got the new figure. Uh, I'd ordered it, I think, prior to me finishing this, so I'm, I'm curious to see what this is, the, the sequel's like. And it sucks because I really like Tsuyata's designs. They kind of just do whatever they feel like. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason for any of the figures that they make, and I love that. I mean, why are they making, like, you know, old woodcut block style samurai, and I don't know where his armor went now. It's just random, and I mean, the amount of accessories and stuff and how you can customize this character I thought was really cool. You know, she's got, like, her bike helmet here, and it's got, like, a little propeller if you wanted to put them on, like, little... Doraemon helicopter things. Uh, the sword, <laughs> talking about things that don't want to cooperate, so it's got like this whole scabbard, and the problem is it doesn't go in the scabbard. There's no real catch to keep it in there, you know? Other than me pinching it together, which isn't the most ideal. So there's some frustrations for sure. I think if you're able to get this thing for a decent price, I say go for it. I mean, it's it's definitely unique. Um, if you're going to put it into a fixed pose, we've got the shield here, the shield that attaches, and then has the whole arm flop over. Might as well show you. I, I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing it all wrong. Maybe there's something I need to go back, if I can even get this to attach. I know I did it before. See, the whole arm just kind of yeah, I, I don't like that. She should be able to keep her pose, and I think it's mostly in the shoulders. Shoulders and the elbows that seem to be the biggest issue. So, it's like, neat concept, plenty of optional stuff. Uh, you've got a lot of, you know, quote-unquote play value here for just setting up a pose. But, when that kind of is happening, that gets me really concerned. Being their first large-scale figure, maybe this is just a one-off thing, and hopefully uh, further down the line things will be a little bit better, because I know they're, they're already showing off like their fourth or fifth of these, you know, model girls at this point with uh, Tsuyata. So, I don't know. Uh, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. 
I'm going to hold on to actually all those extra bits that came with her. I, I just, I have a feeling that maybe, you know, through some of the other kits I've got, I might be able to kit bash together a whole other figure. Something different. And, and while I'm thinking about it, the bike, um, I, I'm still trying to figure out what the purpose of it is. It's got this big articulated tail. It's got these individually articulated claws on the front. You know, the wheel can kind of bounce up and down. And there's actually two in the front. I didn't even realize that at first. Uh, it's something I was not expecting. But why? I'm thinking, why didn't they have these turn into like some kind of an extra weapon or armor or something to go with the whole figure? It just seems like such great potential and then not really fulfilled as well as it should have. Now, if you have other types of these models, I think they're going to work out pretty well together. The Bandai one, I believe, is supposed to be a little bit shorter, being a 30-minute sister. So I, I'm assuming it's supposed to be like a younger-looking model. I have no idea. Getting an actual Gundam up in here, so you guys can see. So with the size of the bike and the amount of plastic taken up by it and all the extra parts, I can kind of see how they justify the price. And there's a lot of neat stuff here to be had. It's just, again... Uh, the overall joint quality leaves something to be desired. So, I don't know. I'll let you guys make of it what you will. Unfortunately, with these Chinese-produced models as well, the numbers out there tend to be a little bit limited. So, if this is something that you think you might want to put the time, effort, and energy into, into making it work out and make it worth your while... I think there's a lot of potential to be had here. I think it's just going to require a little bit more hobbying on the end user's side of things, more so than a typical Bandai kit. And I mean, you know, if you want to paint it, obviously that's going to add to it for sure. Uh, it's just the joints. The joints are my biggest issue. Some of the parts bits were a little iffy too, but I think that's also me just needing to go back and clean things up. So take of that what you will so good luck if you're out there looking for stuff so you know to definitely make some interesting things and one way or the other we're going to go ahead we've already got some of their other model kits lined up one way or the other we're going to build them and so if you're interested look forward to those in the next few episodes yeah there we so with that said this has been high lord tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon Bye bye